Hi, welcome to the Memphis edition where I will share some local attractions. So let's go. Walking in Memphis. Was walking with my feet and feet off a beam. Walking in Memphis. But do you really feel where I feel? Memphis has been bustling for centuries, being well connected by road and train and surrounded by cotton growing fields. A hub for the Confederate Army during the Civil War, Memphis is also where Martin Luther King died. Music courses through its streets, etched by the vicissitudes of racial justice and rewritten by the birthing of another kind of rock and roll king, Elvis Presley. Memphis offers a lot for free to tourists today. I recommend five attractions and one paid attraction. Let's start with the free of cost. First, the Memphis sign. You only pay for parking at the Mud Island Park, the Google Maps destination that is. Everything that follows is free. You tread along the constructed rivers and adjoining city names, reading history trivia and maps. It's fascinating by the Interstate 64 bridge's shadow over the Mississippi River. The park ends at the Memphis sign. Now, the best tip. Don't climb the letters for photos, your bodies won't show. An adjacent board there tells you to stand away from the sign for best photographs. Next, the ducks. What's the draw about ducks waddling from a fancy hotel's elevator to its fountain, especially when it involves a half hour wait sitting with children crying? Let me explain. The Peabody Hotel had an incident when their guest walked in with ducks. Lined with fancy shops and restaurants the ducks didn't belong, it seemed fitting to the Memphis culture transforming an odd experience into a not odd at all tradition. 11 in the morning and 5 in the evening, the ducks arrive daily. Crowds line the red carpet from the middle elevator to the fountain a solid half hour before time. The staff manages and entertains with an odd pride. Children will love it. Next, the Beale Street. Visit Beale Street after sundown and into the night. We were visiting with time-limited children for the atmosphere, not the party. Children can't enter here after 9 and those already present must exit by 11. We arrived here at 6.30 walking along the main street with the trams and the lit carriages, a pedestrian street. The live performers' music booms from the restaurants, the flashing signs glitter and the gift shops line each side, contrasting my image of Memphis, which I lovingly call a sleepy city where we can get between most places in 15 minutes. The experience is electrifying, treading the expanse from Elvis Presley's statue in Elvis Presley Park to W.C. Handy's statue. The experience is free until you sit down to try their exotic drinks, which we did not. Next, the light show. Check out the Beale Street crossing at the Mississippi River next, arriving five minutes before the half hour or the hour when the already lit bridge, that is Interstate 64, breaks into a light show. We were here on a cold, windy night and the show started with Solidarity display of blue and yellow for Ukraine. The show lasts 10 minutes and repeats every half half hour until 10.30 of night. Lastly, the pyramid. The Bass Pro shops at the pyramid aren't exactly free. You can sure visit it for free, especially on rainy days. A highly rated hotel and an observatory for city and the river views can be found inside along with the arcade-like shop. We skipped the observatory and roamed the big sports shop where our children turned this attraction into not so free as they picked out gifts for themselves. The pyramid rules the Memphis skyline. I call it Memphis's Eiffel Tower because you can see it from everywhere. Experience all these attractions for free. Now for a price, Memphis hosts live shows and performances, Graceland, 
Elvis Presley's home and other museums around music and cotton. Graceland will have the steepest price tag. We skipped fees for the one that I insist you must, must visit. The one paid attraction I recommend is the National Civil Rights Museum. Time stands still at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis since April 4th, 1968, a turbulent time in American history when African Americans lived a segregated life devoid of fundamental civil rights. Dr. Martin Luther King visited Memphis to help with the sanitation department issues. Boarded in room 306 of the Lorraine Motel, Dr. King would conduct business on the balcony where he breathed his last moments that evening shot by a bullet from a boarding house window across the street. They have frozen both the hotel and the boarding house. You enter it to witness the National Civil Rights Museum and it begins with the start of slavery. It melts into the cultural flows and the music the African Americans tried to preserve. It rings with the speeches from Dr. King, including his last before he died. The building across shows the rental, the bathroom from where the shooter shot him, how authorities captured him in London a month later. This stop will leave a lasting impact on your psyche, worth every penny, and it will force thoughts for days. Even the gift shop will hold you there longer. The crowd size was the only negative, but the museum is deservedly famous. Other attractions that I have not covered are Overton Park, Overton Square, and the Crystal Shrine Koro, all free. My favorite Indian restaurant for authentic Punjabi food in Memphis, which we repeatedly ate at, is India Palace. Try their curry pakora, taste the chocolate banana bread at Otherland's Coffee, and the best breakfast award in Memphis goes to Brother Jun Junipers. To see the city's oldest restaurant, visit the arcade, though we skipped the stop. Memphis never filled my bucket list, but I'm glad he visited here and so should you. If you like this, hit subscribe and see my other videos on Toffin Island, New York City and more. Until next time, adios.